five here. It says wait for storage pirate. Um, hit the button here. Is it live? It says we're live. I don't see it on the screen. There it goes. All right. Crazy. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, uh, storage addicts of all ages, what's up? It's me, your captain speaking, Storage Pirate. Um, if everybody could introduce themselves, I guess uh looks like Jack will be first. <laughs> hey everyone, thanks for being here tonight. We're we are a locker left. And if you're wondering why I'm wearing this attire, we'll get to that soon enough. <laughs> we are definitely addicted to storage locker auctions. Yes, and you too. Yeah. We got uh, the Hales. I'm George. And I'm Jeremy. And if you're wondering why I'm wearing this attire, we will get to that soon enough as well. <laughs> <laughs> We're here tonight because we are also addicted to buying storage units. We're addicted to buying, selling, and making YouTube videos. And I have a problem. I'm also addicted to an Egyptian. <laughs> Not sure there's a 12-step program. Worked through it so far. Hasn't helped. Boot camp, Pat Beasons. All right, uh, Grimes Fines. Uh, I'm Justin from Grimes Fines. This is my beautiful wife, Gina. Um, what was the question? What was the question? Oh, while we're addicted? Introduce yourself. Man, Lord have mercy, let me tell you. <laughs> I'm so addicted, I can't buy enough stuff. I got to sell other people's stuff, and you'll hear more about that later. <laughs> and i'm mike and i wouldn't be anywhere else in the world because i am truly addicted to buying storages hunting treasure and this is the best place to come for that uh addiction problem that we have so um uh i wanted to uh, uh lately i've been i've been reading a lot of comments and videos and i watch a lot of people on youtube and a lot of people seem to believe that we don't emphasize enough um sometimes how much work is put into our actual uh job between being a storage buyer and a YouTuber, et cetera, et cetera. And I thought it'd be cool if we each took a little bit of time to actually just emphasize what an average day, from what time you wake up, what you do, the time you go to bed, like really what you do every single day, like the amount of actual time. Um, so we'll start with Jack on that one. Oh. Uh, Pirate, can you add um, Lori and Brandon? Lori and Brandon oh, yes. are in the back room. I see that, hold on a second here. Let's let them introduce themselves. Did that work? Are they coming in? Add to stream, boom. <laughs> Uh, Woo! There they are. Welcome, guys. Uh, introduce yourselves. Uh, I am Lori. This is Brandon from Storage Hunters Vegas. Welcome. Um, I don't know if you just caught or not, but I thought uh, I thought we was gonna spend a little time each of us discussing our daily routine from the time we wake up to the time we go to bed. Being a storage buyer slash YouTuber and all the actual amount of work and and everything we put into this, you know. Um, so. Uh, yeah, that's where we're at with that. Jack was going to go ahead and start first. All right. Yeah, I mean, doing the lockers takes a lot of time, a lot of time, um, especially the speed I move, which is not nearly as fast as the speed that Mike moves at because I've worked with Mike. I've seen him work. But um, the add YouTube into the mix, and it's, it's crazy. I feel like this is pretty much all I do. I do this. I uh, go to the kids' soccer games most of the time. We go to church, right? Uh, there's not a lot of time for really anything else. I don't watch TV anymore. Um, for the most part, I, you know, so there's sleep. That's about it. Jana luckily picks up most of the cooking and the most, most everything else. Too, but <laughs> <laughs> it, It's a tremendous workload, but I love it. So doing it doesn't seem like a chore. It seems like it's just it's what I prefer to do over pretty much anything else anyways. Everything else. Yeah. Much. What's yeah. your workload like? My workload. Uh, my workload is pretty much just supporting him. So like lately I've been doing a lot of filming. So I've been trying to go to all the auctions with him and take that over. And then when we get the lockers, I've been trying to do all the filming for him. And then I help him sell everything as far as whenever we go to a market. I love doing that. Um, so I'll go with them to that. But um, he does all the eating too. And then like I give input on a lot of the videos and he does all the work. <laughs> I mean, he does everything when it comes to editing. I do a lot of creative input, like give him ideas and things like that. Um, but, you know, I also do real estate and we have five kids and we run a house. So I pretty much pick up all that slack so he can focus on this because he works mostly like honestly 16 hours a day. I mean, he's up early 
and goes to bed really late and we're always doing stuff, checking on everything, coming up with ideas and brainstorming. It's pretty consuming. Mm -hmm. So, But we love it. Fun. <laughs> All right. Uh one thing I want to say, and if I could get a round of applause, a congratulations, anything exciting like that, Jack hit 20,000 subs oh, today. Oh, 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 congratulations oh, 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 milestone. Thanks, you guys. We're so excited. My goodness, you guys ever deserve it. Yes, yeah. much deserved. Thank you. He's been working real hard on his channel, lots of videos, uh, great content. Uh, so proud of him for that. Thank um, you. Grimes, go ahead and discuss. Uh, your <laughs> you totally freaking blew my segue because when he was sitting there describing that, and I was thinking he hit twenty thousand today, and I just remember blinking and he hit twenty thousand. But y'all like it, it, the hard work shows. There's quality there, and I mean, people don't understand. Like I know that Jack, that y'all put a lot of work into this because I mean it shows, and obviously people like it. So anyway, you totally blew my segue. Um, but our schedule, um, most days starts usually, you know, five or if I like grow a wild hair or something, I'll get to 30 and go in. But um, that's how my grandpa used to say. Um, but uh, I don't even know what it means. Don't Google it either. Um, but so we'll get up and we usually ride to work together. Um, and we get up there and I'll usually start kind of presetting the day for the auction or I'll try to, you know, just get a couple hour, hours of physical work ahead before the team gets there um but it's either we're either out buying units and loading unloading trucks or we're setting up units but i'm or setting up auctions but i mean that's constantly what we do is like seven days except we don't work on sundays you know um you know we, we give that day to the lord but um and you just gotta rest but it, it, it's a we probably do too i probably average probably 16 to 18 hours a day of working it's non-stop yeah, we get there one by the time we get to work and get back home, it's probably at least twelve hours and then eat dinner and then work a little bit more. So. And like the house stuff, we team up on that. Like I'll get up and I'll try to clean the kitchen or something. She cooks a lot. You know, the first two years of our marriage I cooked everything, but she's mm -hmm. she's taking over that, but we just stare at whoever, you know, gets up and sees it, you know. Um, so we just we tag team the house work. Nice. Uh Pat D 72 with a five dollar super chat says, Tell Mike how much you love his shirt. Uh, this is almost like a dress, it is Florida, Florida, my neck. It is not just a shirt, Pat, but appreciate that. Um, storage Stand hunter, up and do a 360. Yeah, we want to see that. I brought one of those home. The whole from thing, Canada. let's do it. Like mine. <laughs> we'll have to do that later. There's a, a reason, okay? Why okay, okay. we can't uh spoil that yet. Uh, Storage Hunters Vegas, you want to go ahead and describe your entire day, start to finish, on average? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, well, pretty much the same thing as everybody else. You know, we get up. Um, it's been really dry here for auctions. Um, the past, like, couple of weeks, we actually don't even, like, have more than one ending for the next, like, three days. Um, but we are always looking online, listing stuff. Um putting stuff together. Um, example today, we, well, I went down to, of course, sell a dresser that we had and he, I came back, he was setting up a pop-up and then we set up a, a trust system for like lighting for like DJs and stuff, um, listed that. Um, so literally on a daily basis, that's what we do. We, you know, list stuff and sell stuff and look for auctions. Um, and then, uh, wake up and do it all over again every day. <laughs> nice. Um, <laughs> George and Jeremy, you want to start? Mm -hmm. and then I'll clean up. Yeah. Our life is pretty much eat, sleep, YouTube. And what it, what's involved in YouTube is storage auctions showing you um, our storage auction adventures and our unboxing adventures. So I have some very, very um, strong opinions about work ethic and laziness. And, and I'm going to spit some of those out. Now, I understand some of those may be offensive to some people in our current culture. But if we were to rewind 200 years uh, and they were to look forward to our culture, you, you would be offending them. So I'm going to try and do it as politely as possible. Uh, Work used to be 
centered around the family. And it was when you got up and when you went to bed and it was the family providing for the family. And that's why I believe so wholeheartedly in entrepreneurship and, and building family businesses. So I'm speaking as a person who actually has hired and has employed over 1000 individuals and paid them on payroll. And so what I found is the people who were the best fit to work with me were those people who grew up in a family business because those families knew you gave it everything, every moment, every day, or you didn't feed your family. And so they grew up with that mentality and that, that flows with me very, very well. Now I say that from coming from a Christian camp and conference point of view, where all of our staff had to live on site to take care of 500 people every single day. And we had to get up before they got up and we had to go to bed after they went to bed. And if we got four hours of sleep, we were really happy that night. And I wasn't able to be a soccer dad because our family was all about serving others. And so that's kind of the mentality that I have in regards to work. So long story short, I pull all of that into storage units. It's when I get up, when I go to bed, YouTube, it's when I get up, when I go to bed, and it's the exact same thing. And so uh, you either have the will to make this work. Nine out of 10 startup businesses fail within the first year. And usually it's not because it's a capital issue, it's because of a lack of work ethic issue. So you either have the motivation to make it work and you're gonna do everything you can to make it work, or you rest upon this, hey, it's nine to five and I wanna know what time my lunch time is, I wanna know what time my breaks are and I wanna know when I clock out. And that is not small business, yet that's the culture that we live in that pounds it into us and says, this is, this is how you succeed. You clock in, you clock out, you get your breaks, you get your lunch. You're not going to succeed in this business if you think like that. Those who succeed are those who grow up on a farm. They understand farming mentality when you get up, when you go to bed. Those who grow up in a small family business, they understand you give it all to feed your family. And now I'm going to shut up because I have strong opinions on that. So it is every moment of every day. That's that's our work schedule. All right. I mean, I, I couldn't say any better that every moment of every day, because that's a, I, I truly believe that. Um, first off, wait one second. I got a super chat here from uh, Storage Auction Snipers, seven dollars, seventy seven cents. He says the hats and horsehair bands from Pirates Auction were on the doorstep today. Thanks, Pirate. Thanks, Justin and crew. Good job, Justin, for getting those packages out. And uh, thanks for buying that stuff, storage auction snipers. Um, for me, like I, like Jeremy says, it never ends. Like I literally, uh, every moment of my life, you ask both of my kids, it's from the moment I wake up, I'm usually up at four in the morning. Even if I don't have to be anywhere by like six, I'm still up at four in the morning trying to plot what I got to do, checking YouTube, all the different things, maybe auction, eBay. But I usually either I'm at the flea market by 536 in the morning or I'm prepping to be at an auction by eight or nine. Um, doing things before that are uh, getting eBay packages out, listing eBay, maybe unboxing some stuff before I got to be somewhere that runs into the afternoon. I'm picking up a unit. I'm filming again. I'm making more ads. I'm putting stuff on Craigslist. I'm cleaning up a mess. I'm cutting in to try to squeeze in, running two kids around, getting the money, doing whatever kind of father stuff I need to, and then finishing off with more of all of that, where I spend most of my evening, probably four, three, four hours just editing, getting a video ready, replying to comments. And I usually fall asleep about midnight with my phone in my hand every yeah. single night. Like <laughs> it's, it's a never ending process. And, um, yeah, to emphasize, uh, the storage business is a lot of work. I, it, it's very profitable, but if you think that you're going to do it and not work hard, you think that you're not going to put a lot of energy into it, it's probably not the best decision for you because you need to be dedicated to this job. That's my personal belief. I'm sure everybody else would probably agree. It's like, it's a dedication. That's hard work. For sure. Um, another question. Um, uh, if you were gonna do this start to finish right now, like you know what you know, you already know all the mistakes you made. Uh, what is gonna be your main focus starting day one if you knew all you knew right now in this business, uh, Jack? 
<laughs> from day one, uh, buy a covered trailer. Because <laughs> how many first years I rented trailers, wasted so many hours at U-Haul, which is great. I, I mean, that's a great way to go. Um, it got us by, but I could have saved all the rental fees and all the time. Just pull the trigger and rent the trailer. Uh, that would have been, it really would have been a game changer because I was probably hesitant in the beginning to take on more. Now that I have a trailer, but I regret buying an open trailer. Um, Lots of regrets. <laughs> yeah, definitely doing a lot more. That was something I should, would have liked to redo on. Anything on YouTube? On YouTube? Mm -hmm. Just film more. I wish we had filmed everything, like from the beginning. Yeah. Um, even like the terrible units, just film everything. Don't let any anything get by. And even when things get kind of weird, like if there's a, you know, like an argument or something that breaks out or anything out of the ordinary, like you're, you kind of get caught up on that, like break out of that, get that camera, film everything and don't be shy about it if you can. And I'll just add to that, like this week we were at auctions and um, a couple of people we know and friends, there was a gal there buying back her own unit. And it's like, we need to, like even catching us filming that because like they were bidding against each other to buy this lady back her unit and they ended up giving it back to her. And it was like really just cool. There's just so many cool things that happen off camera just as a community um, that people do for one another. You're just like, that was awesome. Like really it's just neat to kind of see. And just sometimes we get so like Jack said, caught up, we don't film it. And just learning to just, I'm like trying to keep the camera rolling the whole time to capture things because it happens so fast. Mm -hmm. Nice. All right. Um, Nine dollar ninety nine cent super chat from Victoria MG. She put out a series of uh, super nice emojis. Uh, what were they, Bart? Uh, it looks like one of them is like a a kimono, uh, almost a unicorn. We got a series of hearts, and you know I love hearts. Money, which we all love, money. I, I can't tell if that is cards or a bikini top. But like my vision is bad, and a diamond ring. Um, yeah, wonderful emoji. It's supposed to be a crown. Oh, crown. All right. My vision is pretty bad right now. <laughs> I hovered over it and told me. Um, Grime Spines, your turn. Oh, well, yeah, I would start YouTube a lot sooner. Mm -hmm. uh, I wouldn't have given up on it so quick because, like I've said a hundred times, if, if you know, especially if I hadn't started watching Pirate um, after I had given up, you know, I kind of given up. I was like, well, you know, it's not going to work for me, but I still enjoy it. So I started watching him and, you know, you know, the story, uh, it led us back into it uh, about three, almost three months ago now. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, I, I would have done that. I, I've done, I'm not one to give up on, I guess I didn't give up. I was just like, it wasn't worth the time. Uh, it wasn't giving me any return and I, and I've got a big business to run. And so, uh, it just didn't seem worth the, the time, but it, but I, I think I'm a decent business guy. And, you know, when pirate started talking to me and then, uh, what the hell started really supporting us a lot. Um, I'm not dumb. I knew that y'all were going to be able to help us get over that hump that I think, I don't know what the percentages are, but how I think for the Jeremy that, that said that, you know, nine out of 10, most businesses don't succeed. Uh, well, I'm sure that statistic is probably similar for YouTube channels who don't ever make it to a thousand or, you know, monetized or whatnot. But uh, anyway, so I, I would go back and, and probably I, I would stick with it. Or started watching Pirate a long time ago. We were hooked up a long time ago and done fun stuff. Sweet. Um, Storage Hunters Vegas. What was the question? I forgot about that. <laughs> <laughs> if, if you were to start over from day one right now with all you know from the storage business and YouTube, uh, what would you focus on more? Like, what would you be your main thing to go from the get go? I would just never move to Vegas. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> uh, that would be our number one and start YouTube earlier. I think, yeah. um, you know, after our show ended, you know, we did need some mental space time, but um, start way earlier than we did, but definitely never moved to Vegas. Yeah. All right. Fair enough. Uh, Jeremy and George. Um, well, I've been blessed to, to learn the ropes from this guy because he was doing it long before I came into his life. So I met, we met last Jan end of January, and then I went to my first auction in November, quit my job in this past July. I said January. I met last July. This a couple months ago, I quit my job to do this full time. So 
he was already equipped to do the job. Um, so there's nothing I would change. Everything that um, needed to be in place was already in place, which is why I was confident to quit my job to do this full time. I would change some things. And I, I realize you may giggle when I say this, but um, if I were to start this all over again and with what I know now, I would not be buying storage units in the state of Ohio. I would find the highest yielding profitable area and buy storage units there and maximize my profit, which is why we want to travel <laughs> and get out of Ohio and get out there with all the subscribers. From a YouTube perspective, what I would have changed when I got on YouTube, I knew nothing and I knew nobody. And if, if I would have changed, I wish I could have been in Justin's seat and chair and had had a, a YouTube family come around me and say, hey, let me let me show you how to do this. Let me give you let me guide you. And, and let's let's help grow each other. And so I wish I could have had that, which actually spurns us on to make sure we are that for other people. Nice. Uh, we want to be that for other people because we didn't have it. And I'm sure a lot of the channels appreciate it, right? Oh, and if the tables were turned, you guys would do it for us as well. Yes. Hey, Jeremy, look, the house next door is for sale and it is beautiful. <laughs> you? <laughs> next door, you know? It yes, is. I see it. <laughs> Dallas, and, Gr and Grimes has a pool so you can go swimming in it. Nice. Hey, I'll just knock down the fence. We'll have a community. <laughs> Party at the Grimes. <laughs> so for me, I, I like what, like how Jeremy said that. I was actually on the other side of that because something I would do differently with YouTube is I would uh, become a better version of myself right off the bat. Like I fought tooth and nail for like eight years doing a lot of things dumb on YouTube, being too much myself, um, kind of being bullheaded. And it wasn't until I actually got in contact with Jeremy where I started to realize a lot of errors in my own way. And it helped me out, much like Grimes is saying, my whole everything turned around when our little uh, collab family got together and did everything. And I got to learn from what the hell, because I got to learn from Jeebus. And I got to watch, like, for instance, Alex go from uh, nothing Zero. to something huge in a really small amount of time and uh, a lot of eye-opening experiences from all of that aspect of getting to work together it's kind of it's very helpful to see what works what doesn't being able to see your own flaws um, was very pivotal for me and with the storage business it'd probably be the same thing like when I first started this I was kind of arrogant I would take stuff to flea market I didn't care I would hate to fathom to think about um, all that I've lost in this business. Like I know one time my worst mistake ever was I sold a Salvador Dolly for 200 bucks at the flea market because I was in a hurry to uh, make a little more money for the auction that day and come to find out the guy had got a Salvador Dolly, Dolly signed original from me. And there's a lot of things that I wish I did differently from being myself, but that's the beauty of making mistakes is you get to learn from if you really uh, are good at looking in the mirror, so. Mike, I think I, we talk about this often that collab that we did east versus west in some way fundamentally changed all of us it was a game changer it was a game changer for all of us and and to have an experience like that to pull all of these people from around the united states together and then everybody to come out different that was a phenomenal phenomenal thing i, I totally agree i don't think uh i don't think sometimes maybe some of us don't often uh emphasize that enough of how pivotal it was but um it, it, it caught me off guard because i didn't even see it coming you know then all of a sudden we contact each other and uh the unity that we've had with each other since then uh several channels have grown some that are not in this meeting right now but then there's many of us outside the meeting and it, it was it was huge for a lot of people and it pulled all of uh the subscribers together too if you think about it like not just yeah. us and youtubers but all the subscribers kind of came together as a big family with us too so it is cool. I like going to all of y'all's videos and like the same people in when you have lives and stuff. But hey, while we're talking about that, I actually this was it this morning or yesterday morning. I, I told myself I'm gonna slow down and we'll find one small channel smaller than us, and I'm gonna sit, you know, try to find a good one, and I want to try to do that. So there's a there's one in here. So I figured the one I'll start with is like they literally are in the next city over from us, Crocker's Lockers, and I actually went and watched uh, their videos, and they're funny people. 
They are. They're a yeah, lot of fun. They're hilarious. <laughs> yeah, I really actually watched a few of their videos and it was really enjoyable. Anyway, they're like literally 10 minutes from us. So I'm sure that we'll end up hooking up with them at some point. Um, even though I beat them on this unit last week and they're still a little salty. I think. Nice. Uh, <laughs> but uh, anyway, hey, they are a great channel. If one of you mods would put Crockers, Lockers in there, I believe that they're going to be a good channel. I really do. All right. Uh, I was going to suggest if anybody has any great questions they'd like to ask, um, go ahead and feel free to put them in the comment section. Um, but my next question was going to be outside of just the store, something different. I don't know if I've ever asked this before, but what, what do you guys do to get away from the storage business in uh, YouTube and find peace? To, sometimes this job is extremely stressful in my eyes. It can be no matter how much fun it is. Uh, we all have to have some to kind of block it all out. Uh, what do you do, Jack? Um, Mike, can we put that question on hold and answer a super chat? Yeah. Would you have one? Um, Robin Huntley sent a $2 super chat says, would it be worth it as a side gig for extra money? Um, yeah, let's do that. Jack, go with that one. Oh, I, I definitely think so. But only if you really want your side job to be <laughs> probably more work than your regular job. It's, it's a tremendous amount of work. I mean, you could, but uh, you could buy smaller lockers, um, if you have a truck and a little bit of space, I think you could definitely do it. It's definitely could be good money, but also, um, but it, it, it will take time. You could also consider picking, you know, go to thrift stores and flea markets, garage sales, pick and sell e on eBay. I think that's a great way to earn money through times limited and you don't have a lot of resources as far as uh, trucks and such. You could say. Grimes. Uh, well, was that for Robin? Mm -hmm. Yeah, is it worth it to do it as a side gig? Oh, well, there's another person out here that lives uh, about like 30 minutes from me. Yeah, Robin lives super close to us. So uh, anyway, yeah, absolutely. Um, remember, me and Gina used to both work full-time corporate jobs until I decided that I was not going to spend the rest of my life not seeing or seeing my wife, you know, an hour a day. But basically right before we're, you know, exhausted from the end of the day, so... Uh, I made a very big decision to be able to work and see my wife and my family every day. So uh, I do think that though it could just support if it's just something you want to dabble in uh, for a while until you get the hang of it and then pick it up. And, you know, you can always, you're welcome at our place to come by and see how we, we do things. Uh, and I'll try to be there next time. But yes, absolutely. Part time. Uh, I, I encourage you to start part time. All right. Storage Hunters Vegas. Damn. What was the question again? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> So, so it, it is, um, it's absolutely worth it. Um, as far as, um, buying auctions and as far as YouTube, both together, both are worth it. Um, for like I said, the, the issue is, is for me, um, when I, when we lived back in Boston, um, you know, I had a full-time career. It was, you know, this was just something Brandon was doing and that was his thing and whatever. And then, um, you know, as, as time went on, um, I, I got definitely a think it's worth it. I mean, um, hold I, on. I got a little more involved and it went literally from being kind of a side hustle to literally, this is what we do. So it kind of took over everything. So it all depends on how much effort you want to put into it. If you want it as just a side hustle, just make sure you, you know, buy small, start small and keep it that way or else it's going to blow up into this. I think Jeremy says it best. It's a regional thing. And um, just in terms, if you live like out in this area, I would not suggest it. But regionally, most other areas, it can be profitable if you know what you're looking for. Yeah. Hey, have y'all noticed the trend? Have y'all noticed the trend here that it seems like all the females here got sucked into the trash game by guys? Completely <laughs> sucked in. <laughs> <laughs> what happened? What's on your hand? Um, there was a fly on the umbrella light. I flicked it. It bounced off of my cathedral wooden ceiling. It bounced right in front of me onto the table, and then I smashed it with my hand. Okay. And that <laughs> hey, a pair of bugs hey, at this house. Jeremy, Jeremy. <laughs> <laughs> eat it. That poor no, fly. This will be the highest thing ever. It. Jeremy, Jeremy, eat That's it. Is this very high in protein? protein challenge? <laughs> <laughs> Where did he take the fly to? Where'd he go? He went to the bathroom. Did, you wash, did you wash your hands? Huh? Did you wash your hands? 
No, come on. Oh, okay. I was snacking. <laughs> was Is it, it our turn? Was it our answer? turn? I believe so. Oh, okay. You can go first. Um, I would definitely. So before I quit, obviously, I had a full time career as well. I worked in healthcare for over 21 years. And I would highly recommend that you do start this as a side gig part time, kind of build a nest for yourself before you fly out. Teach yourself the ropes on how to sell certain items because not everything is eBay worthy. There's going to be items that you need to learn how to flip on Facebook Marketplace. There's going to be certain items that will flip better for you on Craigslist. There's so many selling apps out there that you have to try out. I've tried a couple other ones like let go and offer up and those just weren't for me. Um, like Etsy, it, those aren't just for, those aren't for me. So for me, the best selling apps have been eBay, Facebook marketplace and Craigslist. So just kind of, it, it's all about trial and error as well. So you may get an item and it doesn't flip for, as quickly for you as you anticipated it to be. So a lot of people get discouraged and they want to give up. So just kind of getting a feel of what it's like to resell before take before, you know, doing it full time. But absolutely, you could you should definitely do it as a side gig to make extra money. For me, before I quit, I was doing it not even part time. It was more of like a hobby level. And I was listing maybe a handful of items on the weekends when I was free and I was making a thousand dollars a month, which I think is pretty good for a, for a newbie. So let me add just a little bit on that. Anybody can do this and grow small and grow bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. Anybody can do it. Anybody can buy. All these guys always tell you anybody can buy. You have to sell the merchandise. Okay. And so if there's somebody who goes, oh, you know what? You know, if, if you watch Storage Auction Pirate or you watch Grimes Finds or Locker Nuts or Storage Hunters Vegas or What the Hails and, and you go, oh, man, I blame it on them. I've got all this junk and I failed and it's, it's all their fault. That's as ludicrous as blaming the pencil for you failing on your test and going, well, the pencil didn't give me the right answer. Therefore, <laughs> therefore I failed. Who in the right mind is going to, what teacher, what, what business owner is going to go, oh yeah, you're right. It was the pencil's fault. You are responsible to go out with your motivation and get the knowledge and sell. Mm -hmm. If you're not selling, you're not going to, you're not going to win. And so you can't blame that on anybody. The motivation has to come from you. The eagerness to learn the different platforms and what will sell where has to come from you. And the ultimate blame, whether you succeed or whether you fail, is all on you, not the pencil. I'm done. I'm done ranting. I promise. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to get up and yell, Amen, and Jesus. And That's right. Hallelujah. Totally agree. Totally agree. Um, we got a couple super chats here. Storage Prospector 999 sent super chat. He says he wants me to send him a message on YouTube about YouTube ideas and stuff. Uh, if you could message me on Facebook and I will kindly respond. I don't know if it's easy, uh, probably easier than me trying to find your uh, Facebook because I'm horrible at that. Um, I think there's another one here. I can't see in the comments here. Am I missing one? Did I miss one, guys? Oh, yeah, here we go. 999 Adventures with the Hudsons. This weekly AA meetings and Sunday nights with the Hales has taught us so much. I agree. We have been fortunate to have spent time with the Hales. Appreciate all of us for helping us newbies. Aw. Thanks, oh. Beth and Jim. Um, for my answer, to be honest with you, a uh, couple reasons. I wouldn't just necessarily suggest it as a side job. For one reason, um, you're going to get addicted and want to quit your main job. That's exactly yes. how I got into this yeah. is. I was selling on the side. I bought a storage unit. I made some good money in my very first purchase. One dollar turned to 600 at night and I quit my job. And I've been literally addicted, head over heels buying storage units since. And as well, when you have a regular job, that is time consuming. You also have your life and you have your full job. It isn't easy to just go to an auction coincidentally on your day off. It kind of forces you to buy something because you're there. That is not the best way to approach a storage unit. You want to be able to go often and wait for the right buy so if i was going to do some on a side job i would do something more like go to the flea market go to garage sales go to a st uh thrift stores and i would find stuff for ebay versus i would just jump into storage units if you're going to do it as a side job if you start doing this be prepared to quit your job and go full in that's how i feel about it now i want to put a little asterisk on there is 
if you're looking to set up uh, buying lockers and set up a business based off that inventory, if you're going to quit your job and this be your sole income, you better find a way to sell the everyday household items, the vacuums, the microwaves, the decor, down to the flatware. If you can get that down, even only getting a few bucks, I really did. I walked through my place one day. I'm like, if I had a dollar per item, only one dollar. That's why we start our auctions at a dollar on some of the auctions because I was like, if I had a dollar. It all adds up. Yeah, it all adds up. And so if you want to, because here's the deal. Next freaking recession hits. If you build a business on antiques and collectibles alone, you're going to be in big trouble because that's the first thing people will stop spending on. But they will never. In fact, not only will they keep buying the other stuff, they'll be looking to save on that and they'll be looking to purchase uh, gently used items. Right. Um, I want to add on to that too. So if you also decide, decide to quit your job to do reselling full time, don't quit without a savings because you don't know how you're going to do. So before I quit, I had a savings. Or don't quit without a tall, nerdy, balding, fat, <laughs> white guy backing you up. <laughs> I wouldn't call you nerdy. <laughs> oh, I'm, you, I'm nerdy. <laughs> um. $2 super chat from Torch Singer. He asked, uh, why Stockton free sale is not profit space? Um, maybe we can all answer this, not just because of Stockton, but that's where I sell at, Jack, as well. And free sale is something we do. The uh, reason why is when you buy storage units, you have an accumulation of stuff. It's a mass amount. Like You can't just sit there and sell the same stuff every day because everybody is selling the same stuff. Everybody has cups and knives and clothes and dishes and you have to kind of move it. I kind of cut my losses. That's my strategy. That's why I do free. It's after I've already done a dollar, I've taken it out. If it isn't worth $20, I'm not putting it back in my truck to pay the Salt Princess or Uncle Mike or anybody else to tote it around for me. And that's the reason for a, a free sale, in my opinion. Does anybody have any opinions on that? I, I agree. So you can only bring... so. Our idea is this, you know, we, we bring the same stuff sometimes to the swap meet and after a certain amount of time, if it's not selling, you just got to get it out of there because it's going to save you going to dump it. It's going to save you from going to donate it. You're giving it to somebody who could possibly use it. Um, so you can't just, you can't just hold on to everything, you know? So, you know, we give it a turn or two with the swap meet and if it doesn't sell the next time, then guess what? It's got to go because you, Yep. You'll you'll turn into a hoarder. Otherwise, you you just gotta let go. Start yelling gratis. That's it. That's it. Give it away. <laughs> gone. Yeah. You guys do that too. Huh? Oh. Whoa. Woo. What may? That was fun. <laughs> okay, it was me. It was me. <laughs> Is that Area Fifty One? <laughs> right. <laughs> That's like your that's your cliche. One more off camera. One, One more. Off. One more off camera. Okay. And another super chat. Oh, uh, does anybody have any more uh, touch on it before I move forward? No? You had a super chat, Mike. All right. Super chat. Uh, $5 from Flipping Adventures. I like this. I think we're all going to appreciate this, them for blaming us on us. But I, I am loving this new fun employment, and I'm planning on continuing until I succeed. That is the greatest attitude. Don't stop till you succeed. And when should mm. I succeed, I'm blaming all of you. <laughs> Thank you Winky all. Winky face. Winky face. <laughs> We appreciate that blame, but the reality, it's your own determination. Well, she's blaming us it's, on her success. I know, but it's her own determination. <laughs> it's her own work ethic. Yeah. One of the things I often say, it takes 10 years of hard work to become a success overnight. The reality is people only see the success overnight. They don't see the 10 years of hard work. So it takes 10 years of hard work to become a success overnight. And she's going to become that success on her own. But we'll take the credit if she wants to give it. I like it. We got another super chat from Lady Freebird. Sorry, I got to go to bed 3 a.m. here in Ireland. Thank you all, nighty wow. night. Good vibes and the best of the Irish for everyone. Aww. I like it. Um, Good night, Lady Freebird. You know I'm 25% Irish, right? <laughs> Just 25% of a kiss? 25% of a Awkward. kiss. Awkward. Don't do it. It's a trap. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not falling for it. <laughs> Um, one of the things I wanted to do nice, always one of my favorite things to do is what I call like show and tell where we all bring something kind of, uh, cool from our storages we've got recently. So, um, I asked everybody to bring some, hopefully we kind of got something. Um, I'm gonna let Jack start off with that. What he brought to the table, Jack and Jana. <laughs> all right. Honey. 
She's gonna grab hers. And I've got my tire of the evening here. It's a. Uh... <laughs> oh, there you are, Jack. Didn't see you there. Yeah. With your camo. Is locker nuts there? <laughs> that would typically be very funny, except I'm having some difficulty. My screen is completely black. <laughs> it went out a few minutes ago, but uh, so I can't see you. But this is, uh, I'm not up to my fighting weight. So it's not a uh, proper fit, but it's actually more comfortable, I think, than it looks. Now, now maybe you can take it off so Justin can relax. No, yeah. well, I, this whole time, you know what I was thinking about was Tropic Thunder. Have y'all seen that? Yeah. yeah, such a good movie. I was like, it looked like he was about to go try out for Tropic Thunder too. <laughs> I'm the dude that plays the dude that plays the other dude. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so this is my item. It's a horse. It's a bronze horse that I've seen I got. that thing before. Yeah, no, right? <laughs> Whoa! <laughs> yeah, this is my idea. So I um when. Justin had the auction for Mike. I totally love this horse. So we bid on it and Jack got it for me. Yeah, that just came in a couple days ago. So thanks, you guys. That's <laughs> awesome. Hey, love- hey, do y'all know how cool it was to me? Like, I'm a fangirl real quick, okay? How cool it was when we were printing out invoices and I saw Jack's name on there. Katie, I made fun of Katie for getting excited, but I saw it first. <laughs> I was pretty excited. Too. <laughs> <laughs> Awesome. Grimes, what y'all got? So here's the deal. I here's left my item at the auction house. And I texted Mike before the show, and he said I could not show y'all my weenus because I just discovered what a weenus is. <laughs> he thinks it's inappropriate, and it's completely not inappropriate. But he said no, so I'm going to respect that. So I'm going to show you something else. Hold on. I missed that. I was just talking about a weenus. It's cool. It's okay. Don't worry about missing it. I'll show you mine. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> it's the skin on your elbow. It's your elbow skin. That's a weenus? It's yeah. called a you, it's safe. W. Well, weenus. It's a weenus, but don't mess up. But my son was, I was like, what did you say? And he's like, Dad, you're weenus. <laughs> and so I had to Google it. And it's, it's just called the weenus. It's it's kind of funny that I learned that from my kids as well when they were in school. So I learned it from George, <laughs> and I learned it from my kid. <laughs> oh, you did. I think you I just went first, y'all. Has anyone ever talked about a weenus on a live? Every <laughs> time before we hit record, I've mentioned it a couple. Times. Are you serious, man? Y'all oh, yeah. everything I think I do first. Y'all ruin it. <laughs> just remember, just remember, you only know the George. On video, the George off video is completely and totally different. Well, that's between him and I. Uh, we're trying I'm, gonna, to- I'm gonna always maintain a level of professionalism, even off camera when I'm. You with You are not professional at all today. <laughs> when we were with Suburban Beard and Manny and filming, and I had to keep shutting the <laughs> camera off and go, I can't edit this all out, George. Whoops. <laughs> Um, let me get a couple super chats real quick. Jill Presley, I missed yours. She asked why Jeebus and Amber don't come to meetings. Uh, I'm not at liberty to discuss that. I, it's not, uh, I don't have a reason for that. I will ask him, and maybe he will answer that um, at some point on his own, but that's the best I can give you for that. I um, can't imagine I, moving across the U.S. has anything to do with that. It has a huge, a huge <laughs> reason. They're moving all over the place. They are extremely busy. And they're all over the dang auction scene now, too. I see them everywhere now. Yeah, we do miss them, though. Yeah, do you regret that? Like, y'all are trying to get what the hell's. All these people there, you're never going to get a freaking unit again. You keep inviting people there. <laughs> I, I don't care if the whole United States came to California. I'm going to get what I want. That's my attitude. That's right. That's what I do. It. For the record, it's a pirate moving everyone out here, not us. I understand that means more competition. I'm not, I'm not signing up for it. I mean, I like them. I right? like them. But... <laughs> I, want it. I want everybody here. There's awesome. plenty of pie. I'm coming, too. I'm moving my business there. Hey, are you ready? Ready. All Let's right. go. We're done. <laughs> Maybe we cannot stay in Ohio. We're definitely not staying in Ohio. Come to California. Our New Year's resolution, so Ohio, it's... peace out. <laughs> um, we got, we got another super so chat here with Dr. <laughs> Flip. We, <laughs> we, we got a $5 to... super <laughs> chat that I myself do it as a supplemental income. That's why I have a chance to take a long vacation. Uh, amen to that. Who? Long vacations are great. And we got another $2 super chat for uh, thank you for the weenus education. So <laughs> round of applause for that, Grimes. 
Yeah. Hey, I'm always here to help, guys. Aren't y'all glad y'all brought me in on the team? You learn something new every day. <laughs> and flipping Avengers was five dollars super chat too. Oh uh, yeah, yeah. Flipping, uh, flip, flipping Avengers got a five dollar super chat. The bronze horse looks like one of the Hudson Hawk movie. It was priceless. Oh, we gotta, we got How to much resell that. that horse it's, it's pretty heavy. I don't know, probably. Eight. Six, seven pounds. You it's, think? it's I think it might be heavier than that. It's yeah, it's nice. Heavier. I like it. I think I'm more like fifteen. Okay. I'm just strong. I just felt light. Can <laughs> <laughs> we show my item? Or are we doing a super chat? Yeah, no, do, do your uh do your item. Okay, so no more weaknesses and no more um uh, I just left my item. So here's what I want to show you. So it's this is Ninja Turtle, okay? And this is like everyone. Uh, from back from NECA, like the NECA version back when they started in black and white. I don't know if people know that. But so this is Kennedy, my daughter, bought me this set. I don't know if you see it. But she saved up her money and bought this for dad because I am a freaking Ninja Turtle freak. I love vintage toys. And so, hey, if you ever want to send me anything, just send me a Ninja Turtle. I love you, bro. That's does, sending, does sending you a rat count as it being Splinter? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Just right. put a little jacket on him. Make sure he's got food so he doesn't die in the mail. Let's go. Oh. All right. Uh, Storage Hunters Vegas. So we didn't really buy. Um, we haven't bought a unit this week because it's been, like I said, kind of dry here. Um, well, but I did find a Rubik's Cube in the last one. Oh, my God. Him so. and his Rubik's Cubes. <laughs> I got right there. <laughs> like literally nonstop. And then he shows me one side done. And I'm like, yeah, turn it. And he's like, no, I did it. And I'm like, no, turn it. <laughs> I just take the stickers off. That's what he's about to do. But so that's his. And then mine, um, it was from um, a bin that we got two weeks ago. And literally I have so like, I'm a huge Marilyn Monroe like freak. And um, so we got like a whole bunch of Marilyn Monroe stuff, but we found, well, it's a playboy, but it's like Marilyn Monroe. And it's got like this little mask of her inside, which is kind of cool. So I'll show you. I can find it. Here it is. So it literally like pops up the eyes and stuff and whatever, but it's literally a, a 1979 um, magazine. So we got a whole bunch of stuff that we kept from that. Well, I got a whole bunch of stuff that I kept of Marilyn Monroe from the bin that we got like pictures and posters and magnets and everything. So, but so that collection was, my favorite. Nice. Sweet. I like Marilyn Monroe too. I love um, her. <laughs> Jeremy and George. We probably we have to explain a little bit. Yeah. So for it person. was it was an it was an experience a first time experience for me. I don't know if it was for you. We'll just say it was the first time experience for, for the both of us. Yeah. So we did um like an estate buyout again which was a first time experience for me so yeah. we went to a local celebrity's home one of his homes yesterday and we were doing an estate buyout we got to pick his home you will not be able to see these videos it'll be months and months from now he has three more homes that we're going to have the ability to hopefully go and pick and so until we can release the videos you won't be able to see the videos but we are going to show you a couple of the cool things that we got yesterday. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. We got, we got, we got first dibs on cherry picking. So one of the, he, one of the things that um, I found was Egyptian art. And a lot of you know that I'm Egyptian. So these are pieces that I'm actually going to, I usually don't keep stuff that I find in storage units, but this is something I'm going to keep and add to my collection. And you want to show them what you do? I love toys. Now, I do want to share. I've already gone on too many rants tonight. Um, so before anybody says that we are racist, we are not racist. Uh, we are in an interracial, interracial relationship. relationship. <laughs> uh, if we could be very, very bold, George's son is black. He's part and, black. And I'm part black as well. <laughs> Maybe not by birth, just by son. <laughs> So all that being he's said, like twenty five percent black. This twenty five percent Irish, twenty five percent black, and one hundred percent white honky nerd. So this toy is what's called Black Americana. All right, and this stuff is so cool. This would be a dancing puppet. 
so you have you have a wire here in the back and then you make it walk and you make it dance make a moonwalk so let's see a moonwalk i am still practicing the moonwalk <laughs> but this was one of the pieces in the celebrity's house yesterday and so it has the different joints and it's like a puppet dancer there's all different kinds of words for these kind of toys Many of them are derogatory, which we would not use. Bring and, them over just a little. because And George says bring it over. But this toy is just so cool to me. And so I'm going to make them walk here. And so you play with this puppet. You make them dance and you make them walk. And that was a really cool toy that I found yesterday. I was thrilled. Can you give us a hint on who the celebrity is? Um, I don't know. I don't know if you'll know him, but. We'll just say he has a god complex. God. That's it. That's your only hint. It, it, okay. Like sports, movies. Give us a genre. That was your only hint. <laughs> that was your only hint. Uh, it'll probably be months and months and months from now before you actually get to see the video. So we did video and um, the items, the items that we picked yesterday will be on eBay immediately. We, we're not sharing that eBay account, are we? Mm -hmm. Okay, apparently we are. So those it's items- It's gonna go on the one that I share. Okay, so those items are going on the one that she shares. So uh, so maybe if you buy one of those items, his name may be on the back of it unless we didn't clean it off. But uh, there's, there's too much more to come for us to share any of that yet. We have to wait until it's okay to release it. I think I guess, but I won't say it. We'll, we'll be uh, anxiously awaiting that. Okay. Um, I guess it's my turn. Uh, this was my item I brought. I've been wearing it. It is a ceremonial wedding Japanese kimono. I don't know if it's, I don't, I think it's for a girl, actually. I don't think it was for the guy. I could be wrong, but I was really impressed with that. That was one of the coolest items I got. I like the That's quality fancy. of it. Is it heavy? Uh, it is a little heavy. Like, I wouldn't want to go to the mall in this, you know, and just walk around. Like, it would be a little awkward. And it's <laughs> like, you go grocery shopping in it. Dude, Walmart. You'd fit right in. You'd be fine. <laughs> People in Walmart. You would like it, George, because you can hide knives in here. So, you would appreciate that. Oh, nice. In there or something. Perfect. Uh, <laughs> that was my item. I, uh, it was a no-brainer. I was going to bring that today. Uh, but, yeah. Um, before I forget, I want to say... Uh, I appreciate all the moderators, all those who uh, are in here with the uh, wrenches and their share the links and everything. If y'all don't forget to go subscribe their channel. Several of them have channels that are our moderators in here. And please show them some love as well. They, they spend a lot of time helping all of us out and being here with us. Um, just want to say that. And uh, one more thing before we forget, Grimes wanted me to announce today that uh, the registration for the second auction that we're having is open now sometime next week, you said? Uh, Pre-registration is open right now, and the sale will open tomorrow, tomorrow night. Tomorrow night. Oh, okay. Well, <laughs> go ahead and pre-register. And once you pre-register, if you've already pre-registered for the first one, you're going to get an email. So you don't, I mean, you can still go register, but you'll get notified. All right, sweet. Yeah, I wanted to throw that out there. And um, I know we're getting close. Do we have any uh, other good questions that were asked that any, did anybody notice? or? If, so, yeah. if anybody has any legal questions, we're going to auction school tomorrow and we'll be broadcasting that live at 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Mm -hmm. So Sweet. bring your legal questions to so ask would, the, uh, the auctioneer. And you will you you'll, it'll be the auctioneer and you guys basically. We're he's gonna, the instructor and he's also an auctioneer. So the live stream is going to be pointing on him as the auctioneer and we'll be there with our laptops be able to a ask questions on behalf of the viewers. Okay. And it's all going to be based upon the legal the legal system around storage unit auctions. But they're going to have it. It's going to be during an active class, Jeremy. It's an active class. Yeah. We yeah, are going to be in an actual a lot of future auctioneers in there with them. Yes. Mm -hmm. All right. Awesome. I saw a question here from, um, it was, where did it just go? Um, uh, trucker for life. I think it, he said it was his first time on the, on the chat, but he asked how hard is it to get started? Um, so I don't know if that's a question you guys want to answer. I don't know if he's talking about YouTube or storage auction buying in general. So it just depends what's your end goal. I always ask that. I mean, there's so many things that there's a different array of things. I tell you, I, I need to know what your end goal is. 
uh, to give you solid advice. So like, are you just trying to do this part time, full time? Um, what do you want to have an auction house? Do you want to sell on eBay? Do you want to sell on Amazon? Because I think those are all different paths. Somewhere. That is, that is kind of makes it kind of a trick question. I, like I say, I always say, I don't want to say it's hard because I started with a dollar. I started with a dollar and pretty much five months ago when I kind of put myself in a hole, I started this whole business again with three dollars. Um, it's not hard. It's really a, it's a matter, of, like I was Jeremy saying, are you ready to be dedicated to what you do and, and eat, sleep and drink it? Or are you just trying to dabble in some and hope you're going to retire in a week? You know, it's it's your motive, what you're what your what your goal is yeah if you don't and if you don't like to sweat if you don't like hard work i can't emphasize on this no more don't like do it. it's i'm telling y'all this it's it, the job is so exciting and fun it gives me the motivation to want to do it again because i'm like man i don't know what's in the next unit i don't know what's in the next unit so it's that surprise and that excitement that keeps me going but i'm telling you what we work our butt off i know everybody in here works their tail off and if you're gonna do it alone Hey, you better be able to clear those units on time or you won't be able to buy units very long. You know what I mean? Yeah. I would imagine it would be harder doing it alone. It'd be very hard. Yeah. It's definitely, it's definitely hard work. It's a dirty job and it's back breaking work. So get ready to uh, get a workout. in if you decide to do storage units, we make it, we make it look easy in our videos, but it is a lot of hard work. It's yeah, like watching, it's like watching anything on HGTV. You go, oh, wow, they remodeled a home in 30 minutes. This is incredible. <laughs> and then you go and say, I want my kitchen redone. And four months later, it's still not done. It takes time. It's yeah. hard work. This is and we're not going to show you four months of video. Um, I saw one good question. It was by, I think, East Coast Auction Pirate. He asked, when you see a person with multiple units, uh, how do you choose which ones to buy or and I, I, there was more than one part, but I kind of lost the question. But um, Jack, you want to answer that? How do you decide which one to buy? I think it's. Yeah. I think you just gotta look at them and, and decide which one is speaking to you. So like you know, I mean, <laughs> if it's got mattresses, it probably doesn't speak to a lot of people. But if it's got um, you know, like some guys are after the sporting goods, some guys are really after furniture. Some guys, most guys are after toys. Um, there's guys that are after tools. So whatever speaking to you, the first one that I bought ever, um, didn't, didn't that one have Raider stuff in it? Mm -hmm. So I looked at it and I said, yeah, that one's speaking to me. And it was a guy's locker. So the, you know, had a lot of guy stuff in it and that did speak to me. And that's when I was, you know, eventually pulled the trigger. But I think uh, whatever you're interested in, that's if it's bikes, uh, you know, find one that has bikes. That's the one that you pull the trigger on. I like old things, so I always look for stuff that's really old. So I like antiques, so that's one thing I look for. Um, and then I just look for quality. Like for me, like I kind of look at what kind of brands they buy, and I can kind of usually get a feel for the quality of what's going to be in there. I mean, we're definitely always surprised sometimes, but and sometimes disappointed. But generally, you can kind of tell by the by the quality of stuff. Either way, sometimes it doesn't matter, but that's what I look at. All right. Grimes, you got any uh, insight on that? I uh, try to buy as many units as you can. And I, I just look for as many sell as what I call sellable, right? Mm -hmm. Just as many items, small or big that I return my money. So, you know, typically like 10 by twenties, I know what they're going to, what they're going to give me on a low end. If it's just all common stuff. And if I hit a collection, you know, I can typically add a few grand on that. So I, I go for quantity. So I don't, I mean, I do get that gut feeling. I get, I get this weird thing. I'm telling you. And I, I know when there's going to be some big or uh, Just learn to trust your gut. Learn to profile right, right. Uh, learn, learn to see. Look at the clothes. Look, how did they treat the furniture? Uh, are their clothes stained? Is, is there dog chew marks all over the bottom of the furniture? You know, things like that. So I, I just look for sellable. All right, uh, Storage Hunters Vegas. Um, I mean, so for us, if, if the you let's say the same owner owns three of the units to be honest with you i feel like most of the time you have to buy them all um a lot of times there's let's say chairs in one and the table in another and this you know so you're gonna have like mismatch items all throughout so if you're not you know if you're not ready or prepared to buy you know let's say all three units if there's three of them but from a financial smart point what you want to do is let's say somebody buys two of them and, and you and you have a chance to buy one of them 
you buy that one, right? And then you sell, you jack the price up. That guy bought the other two, and now you just pretty much triple quadruple your money because he needs the parts from like the furniture and the table and all that. And you and you could call whatever you want for a price. That's the way I do it. Smart, right? Makes yeah. sense. Yeah. All right, uh, Jamie and George. We would agree with Storage Hunters Vegas. Yeah. Yeah. Like you said, there could be a piece of the furniture in one unit or the other. But if you decide that it's not in your budget to buy all of them, right. then work a deal with whoever got the unit and maybe do a trade off. Yep. Hey, you have the chairs to my to my dining room table. Do you want this instead? Right. Yep. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I'm, I'm pretty much in the same boat. I 100 percent agree. If somebody has three units. You buy all three, period. You don't want to find a Rolex box in yours and then yeah, uh, Joe Schmo's next door screaming, I found a Rolex, you know? Or $100,000 in gold. gold bars. <laughs> yep. Um, and uh, like Grimes said, you want to profile. So if you're looking at whether you're going to buy one or, or all or none, uh, it's very essential. Jeremy always says profile. I have a firm belief that uh, there's three things that are important to a person when I look at a unit. A person takes care of these three things. They took care of everything. Uh, the place they lay their head at at night. If their mattress is nice, yep. the things they eat with, their kitchen supplies are nice, and the shoes they wear, if they're taken care of. If those three things are kind of out of tact and out of whack, um, chances are everything they own is going to be that way. That's the my main thing that I look at when I profile something. Um, yeah, so um, I know we're getting close to our time here at the end. Uh, it's been over an hour here. Um, does anybody have anything they want to add to this? meeting anything they want to say mm -hmm. crickets no. i don't think so all right uh, another more the most important thing we need to discuss before we leave is who's going to uh, host next week uh who's whose turn is it <laughs> i can't remember Not it. I, uh, I think it's our turn is I don't it? Know. we can really we can sure. or it doesn't matter well we might be on the road to ohio Oh, wait, next Wednesday? Yeah. Oh, it ain't happening next Wednesday. What time do you guys get into Ohio? Um, I'm trying to keep it kind of a secret. Okay. If you didn't oh, okay. see something, it's all about the surprise, Jeremy, and you're about to blow it. We do love a good surprise. <laughs> we can post next Wednesday. How about we let y'all know? Not on the live. Well, Storage okay. Hunters Vegas just said they'll host, so that'd okay. be awesome. Yeah, y'all do that because... Uh, I don't think we'll be there in time. I think it'll be late Wednesday night. All right. Hey, Jeremy, how long do you think it'll take me to get there? If I do like 90 the whole way there? He will, too. <laughs> um, I'm not sure. You're about I, an hour, no more than an hour and 15 minutes. Hold on. I'll look now because oh, I know mean, what city, city you'll be in. I, I think he's talking about from where he's at in Texas, babe. I think to Ohio. he looked it up at 16 hours. Yes. Yeah, there. How far are y'all from where I am, or where where we're going today? Yeah. Let me look it up now. You're gonna be you're gonna be in Lakewood, right? Yeah. Oh, I thought it was Lake Charles. Yeah, that that one too. An hour and three minutes. Yeah. Yeah. Nah, Lakewood's an hour. Oh, that means that means thirty minutes in Dallas, huh? Yeah, probably, probably thirty minutes. If you get I, I never... over, make sure make sure you record it and then get a picture of you and the cop for the thumbnail on the video. Okay. <laughs> Hey, I never seen Mike act like such a little girl until he until Todd drove Ooh, I'm seeing doubles of Jack and Jim. Hello. I think that he I think that he had one that needed to be added and he said it was black, so I just hit the add button. But it's all right, we can see two Jack. He deserves it today. That was so weird. Twenty thousand celebration. I have more uh, anxiety, and I thought there's something weird was going on in my head. Right yeah, now. <laughs> <laughs> can't be doing that. Well, <laughs> maybe that fixed it. Um, <laughs> I had a good question, Jeremy. I don't know if he should ask this to you tomorrow, but he wanted to know if you would ask the rules on YouTube auctions during your video tomorrow. I, don't yeah, know I, I responded to Pat if he can send that that question during, during the actual the live. live. We'll forget because as soon as this is done, we'll be up all night working on YouTube videos and we will forget. It's just the reality of it right. because we can't remember everything. So if anybody wants to submit, we're, we're going to take those questions that are we want to also give preference to the people who are going to be on the live stream. 
And so if they've got a question on the live stream, we're going to give them preference of that question as well. And we think that's only fair for them to actually be there during that live stream. So we want to give that preference too. I don't know. All right. Cool. So, um, yeah, I guess this is a uh, time to say goodbye. Jeremy, you going to sing us a song, like a beautiful yeah. movie or perform? Uh, I wasn't planning on it, but I can I can try and come up with something. Let's do got? it. I have a feeling you can. <laughs> Grimes, could you sing with him? What do we what do we yeah. say? Going once, going twice. Or you can have them sing if you love auctions kind of this type auctions okay. anonymous. Right. Yeah. If you love auctions anonymous. Type, I love Auctions Anonymous AA in the chat. Let us know in the chat. <laughs> if you love AA, type, I love AA in the chat. If you love AA and you learned what a weenus is today. <laughs> if you love AA, type, I love Auctions Anonymous AA in the chat. If you love A, A, type I love A, A. If you love A, A, type I love A, A. If you love A, A, and you learn what a weenus is today. That's just funny to, to sing. I like that. <laughs> it's a if funny you word. love A, A. <laughs> <laughs> to type I love A, -A in the chat. Thank you all. Okay. Thank you all. It wouldn't be alive with Jeremy if we didn't have singing. I appreciate that, Jeremy. Um, <laughs> all right. Uh, you got another super chat. Goodbye. Yeah, it's not, okay. Do you throw weenuses in the air? No. <laughs> They're all saying we love A, -A but not weenuses.